Welcome everybody to the eighth chapter in the Bhagavad Gita study series. It's titled Akshara Brahma Yoga. So the yoga of the imperishable Brahman. Aksharam. Sharam means decay, destruction. Aksharam means that which is indestructible there. Yoga of the indestructible Brahman. As usual, we'd like to acknowledge Swami Paramatan and the Saraswati for the traditional rendering of Vedanta as it was done for over a thousand years, starting with Adi Shankaracharya. And we are following his discourse. We'll say a small prayer. Om Sri Guru Pyo Namaha Sada Shiva Samaram Pam Shankaracharya Madhyamam Asmadacharya Pardyan Pam Vande Guru Param Param. Salutations to the lineage, starting with Lord Sadashiva, with Adi Shankaracharya in the middle, and continuing up to our immediate teacher, Swami Paramatthananda Saraswati. So, we've seen how the Bhagavad Gita is organized. The first six chapters talk about each, the Jiva Swarupam. The middle six chapters that we are studying now. They talk about the Ishwara Swarupam, nature of God. And it also talks about meditation on God, Ishwara Dhyana. So this chapter is all about meditation on God. So the seventh chapter, the Ishwara Swarupam is introduced. And also Bhakti was introduced, devotion. Here it talks about Ishwara Dhyana and the type of Dhyana. So the, we saw how um, there, there can be th three types of Ishwara Dhyana. Number one. As Saguna Ishwara Dhyana, like a Krishna, a form, Ishwara with a form. It's very easy to visualize. You have Krishna, a form, Ishwara. That's one type. So this chapter focuses on Saguna Nishkama Ishwara Dhyana. Saguna means with form. Nishkama means without asking for desires. It's not like you're worshipping so that you can get money or something like that. There's no de de desires. So Saguna Nishkama Ishwara Dhyana. And then there's another type of jnana um, on the universe. Oh, God as the universe. So that is as uh, Vishwarupa uh, Darshana jnana. So, and then there's a final stage, Nirguna Ishwara jnana. That is the Nirguna means without any gunas, without the attributes. There's a Brahman. How do you visualize the Brahman? By tuning into yourself. It is the same Brahman that is inside you also. So that is how you visualize the Brahman. That is, the, these are the three types of Dhyanam. And here, the Ishwara Dhyanam that's talked about is Saguna Ishwara Dhyanam. So the Bija Shloka, so we talked about the concept of a Bija Shloka. Bija Shloka, Bija means seed. The seed Shloka of the eighth chapter lies in the last two verses of the seventh chapter. So Krishna introduced six technical terms in the seventh chapter. Krishna also introduced, in addition to these six terms, he introduced the concept of remembering God at the time of death. So the chapter starts off by Arjuna asking, what those six terms plus that one concept of remembering God at the time of death mean? And Krishna answers these six terms in just two shlokas and spends 24 shlokas on remembering God at the time of death. That's the topic. So the two shlokas which form the seed of this chapter are Jara Marana Mokshaya Mama Shritya Yatantiye Te Brahma Tatvidu Kritsnam Adhyatmam Karma Chakilam Taking refuge in me those who strive for freedom from decay and death, they know the Brahman completely, the self completely, and also the karma completely. So Bhagavan uses three terms here. Brahma, Brahman, Adhyatmam, and Karma. So three terms he uses. So Arjuna is going to ask those questions. Then Bhagavan says, Sadi bhutadi daivan maam, sadi yajnam chayye viduhu, 
प्रयाण काले हे विदुर्युक्त चेतस अधिभूतम स अधिभूतम मीन्स विथ अधिभूतम अधिभूतम अधिदेव अधियज्ञम सो सो आदि साधिभूतम मीन्स इट्स स अधि आदिभूतम एंड देन आदि यज्ञ आदि एंड आदि दैव एंड देन सो सिक्स टर्म्स हियर थ्री थ्री एंड देन प्रयाण काले पिचमा ते विदुर युक्त चेतस प्रयाण काल मां विदु knowing me at the time of death so what does this concept means now th- this chapter um you have to interpret properly otherwise it can be a very confusing chapter because he's going to talk about travel uh, or the dakshinayana uttarayana all these kind of things he will talk about but you have to understand the angle from which he's talking about so in this um, ch- it's it's kind of like a odd chapter um, it's placed between the 7th and the 8th chapter no uh, 9th chapters 7th and the 9th chapters are more or less the same so bhagavan talks about uh, uh, ishvara and bhakti in the 7th and he introduces 8th and he then say, says more or less the same thing in the 9th why is he doing that so for that we have to understand the 7th and the 9th highlight moksha that is liberation through nishkama nirguna ishvara bhakti look at this comes nishkama means without desires you just want to get liberated you don't want to ask for money anything nirguna ishvara bhakti the bhakti of ishvara without attributes that's a brahman and it's very difficult to visualize the brahman how what do you even think of like think of nothing because brahman is incomprehensible this is where in the 6th chapter it said how do you look at brahman by looking at yourself what's inside because what's inside is the atma which is nothing but the same as the brahman so this kind of bhakti is called uh, the the liberation moksha through this kind of bhakti is called sadyo mukti instantaneous liberation look at the word that's used sadyo mukti it's like instant noodles instant liberation or jivan mukti liberation when alive these are the two terms used for this kind of liberation you can also get liberated by worshiping krishna rama shiva those kind of things and the eighth chapter talks about moksha through nishkama still without desires only i want moksha saguna ishvara bhakti this is called krama mukti krama means steps it's not a direct instant liberation it has to go through several stages several steps liberation through several stages so bhagavan says the easiest way to get liberated is through nirguna ishvara bhakti that's the shortest way but there are some challenges for this you have to have dissociation from the body adyakta higatir do kam deha vitpir avapya te so bhagavan later in the 12th chapter he'll say to answer arjuna's question both the liberate um, worship of nirguna brahman and the saguna ishvara both can lead to liberation but if you are an unprepared mind you have a deha bimana then it's best you do the saguna ishvara bhakti but the saguna ishvara bhakti takes a long time it's called krama mukti so in the seventh chapter he introduces the nirguna brahman the concept the higher para prakriti and then he says reintroduces bhakti and then he says okay there's another way to get moksha that is the saguna ishvara the apara prakriti worshiping krishna that also will give you moksha but it is a longer path that's what he's saying and in the ninth he again reiterate the nirguna nishkama ishvara bhakti is it understood so the eighth chapter is called akshara brahma yoga yoga of the indestructible brahman only because krishna's teaching start with the word akaram brahma paramam so like that 
it should have been titled Prayana Kala Ishwara Smarana because 24 shlokas are for this. Only two shlokas Bhagavan allocates for uh, clarifying Arjuna's questions, Akshara Brahman. It talks about indirect liberation by Nishkama Saguna Ishwara Bhakti. And it's called Krama Mukti, liberation through unselfish worship of God with attributes like Krishna, Rama, like that. Krama Mukti, Bhagavan will say this, Krama Mukti is not an easy process. Even though it's easy for us to visualize God, the process itself is longer. You understand? If you are able to visualize the Brahman as the Atma inside you, if you think you are not the body, you are not the mind, you are this consciousness, that is the easier path, instant liberation. This path, even though it looks easy or you are worshipping Krishna, but it involves a lot of steps and he is out, uh, outlining them here. Kama Mukti involves remembering God at the time of death. Think about it. We have to remember God at the time of death. And you have to do some acrobatics with the prana. He's going, going to say. So how do you remember God at the time of death? The time of death, what 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 is the thing that comes to you? The thing that you think about all the time, right? So for this, one has to practice Saguna Ishwara Upasana for a long time. So Krishna says, always think of me as the embodied person, as or Vinayaka, Shiva, Vishnu, whatever. If you think about something throughout your life, at the time of death, you will think about that. That's the idea. Then one doesn't get liberated. One goes to Brahma Loka. We'll see what Brahma Loka is and attains the knowledge of libera for liberation and gets liberated. From whom? From Brahmaji himself. Brahmaji is the tutor there. 24 7, you have all the comforts. You won't fall asleep. Brahmaji is giving instructions, so you get liberated. And Bhagavan says this is an indirect and difficult path compared to Sadhya Mukti, instant liberation while alive. So, the two processes for Mukti liberation. First, you start with Sakama Saguna Ishwara Upasana. What is this? Worship. Upasana means meditation, worship, like that. Sakama means you go to a temple, worship God, so you can get good health or good uh, money or things like that. Sa kama means with desires. Sa guna ishvara means go to Krishna or go to Lakshmi to pray for money. Sa guna ishvara means ishvara with attributes. Like Lakshmi has the attribute of wealth bestower. Then your bhakti gets refined over a period of time. You lose that desires. You still worship um, Krishna or Lakshmi, but it's Nishkam. It is just for the sake of it, it because it calms my mind and I have a desire for something higher. Nishkam, still Saguna Ishwara Bhakti. Still you worship Krishna, Lakshmi. Then there are two paths to Mukti, liberation. One is called Krama Mukti, which we're going to see in this chapter. There, you have to remember God at the time of death. Prayana Kala Ishwara Smaranam. Then you go to Brahma Loka, gain the knowledge, and you attain liberation. Whereas, then from Nishkama Saguna Ishwara, you go to Nishkama Nirkuna Ishwara Jnana. What is, instead of going to the uh, like temple to worship Krishna, you start meditating on the nature of the consciousness. That is you. This consciousness is the same as the Brahman. This is called Nishka Nirguna Ishwara Jnana, the Brahman, through your consciousness. So, and it's done through Shravana, Manana, Nidityasana, listening to scriptures, understanding, and internalizing through meditation. And then you get liberated. So, this will seem like an easy path, but it's a long path, not that easy. And Bhagavan will say, if you know this trick, the Shavana Manana Nityasana, that you, this is throughout the Upanishads, it says, you are the consciousness, the same as the Brahman. You are not the mind, you are not the body. Once you know that trick, instant liberation. Okay, that's what Bhagavan says. So is it understood? This, everybody?
Are there any questions here? This is so it's our chapter. Bhagavan is for the sake of completion. So you would expect Krishna giving lecture to say, hey, come worship me. No, when he says me, he's referring to the Raha Prakriti without form. He said that I have a superior form. I that is without any attributes in the seventh chapter we saw. Anybody has any questions here? Everybody is quiet. Okay. And there are different lokas. So Bhuloka is where we are. And then there are lo uh, sub worlds to Naraka Lokas. So there are seven of them. And Bhuloka, Bhu, Boha, all those things. And you go all the way to Brahma Loka. And that's where Brahmaji sits, apparently, the creator. He gives instructions for liberation. So at this point, I wanted to, uh, sometimes I give the etymologies, right? So Sanskrit is a very old language. So the word lokaha, it has the same um, root as, or uh, the English word look has the same root as lokaha. It comes from that. Look, right? And lokaha, a place where one sees Lokyati yati iti lokaha. A place where one sees things is a loka, meaning a place where one experiences. It's only in a world you can experience this. When the um, sukshma shariram has departed the body, it's not in a world because there's no body associated with it. So it cannot experience. Do you understand? So that's why it's called lokaha. So far, any questions? Everybody, is it clear? Yes, no? Can somebody give a yes, no? Because there are some subtle concepts here. So I wanted to give, OK. All right. Now we will see the topics. So Arjuna asked seven questions, and Krishna, so there are six uh, Concept six um, technical terms and one concepts. I, Krishna answers these six questions. Um, in all this, in all these happen in shlokas one through four. So, Arjuna two shlokas, Krishna two shlokas, and then the rest twenty four. Krishna talks about remembering God at the time of death. Prayana kala Ishvara smarana. Prayana means travel. Prayana Kala means at the time of travel. Travel means what? Sukshma Shariram leaves the body. Ishvara Smaranam, remembering God. In significance and method of remembering God at the time of death. Prayana Kala Ishvara Smaranam. That's 5 to 14. And two goals for people in life. God, everything other than God. 15 to 22. The two destination. Krishna Grati, all destinations. Below the Brahma Loka and Chukla Gati, the Brahma Loka. So these things, unless um, you interpret it from a great Acharya like Shankaracharya, you can misinterpret. You'll say during winter, go there, during summer, go there. So it may look confusing. And then the glory of Nishkama, the Pasaka, who attains Krama Mukti in the last Loka. So first, Arjuna's seven questions and Krishna's answer to the six questions and Shlokas, one through. Arjuna Upacha Kim Tat Brahma Kim Atyatmam Kim Karma Purushotama Adi Bhutam Chakim Tokam Adi Devam Kim Uchate Adi Yajna Katam Kotra Ekesmin Madhusudana Prayana Kale Chakatam Neyo Siniya Tatma Bihi. These two shlokas are lumped together because these are Arjuna's questions. Okay, so first question Arjuna asks Kim, what Tad Brahma? What is the Brahman? Kim ad, Adyatmam. So, what is the Adhyatmam? And Kim Karma, what is Karma? So, um, here he is asking, 
and Kim Karma or Purushottama, and then Adibhutam. What is Adibhutam? And what is Adidevam? So he asks, I have to underline karma also. One, um, one, two, three, four, five. So he asks five uh, Adibhutam and Adidevam. And then in the second shloka, he asks, who, what, who is the Adi Yajnaha? And how does this Adi Yajna remain in the body? O slayer of the Madhu. Adi Agnya Katam Kotra. Um, who is this Adi Agnya? And um, or what is this Adi Agnya? How does the Adi Agnya remain in this body? Dehe Asmin De Asmin Dehe in this body, O Madhu Sudhana. Um, how does this remain? Madhu Sudhana refers to Krishna, slayer of Madhu. And Prayana Kale Chakatam Neyosi Niyatatma Bihi. How are you to be remembered at the time of death by Niyatatma Bihi, by the self disciplined ones? Okay, so these are the questions Arjuna asks. And then, so all these are technical terms. Why does um, uh, Krishna introduce all these technical terms? Because um, he just is speaking Arjuna's curiosity about all this, so that Arjuna understands, look, this worship of a God, God with form is not an easy thing. It's a very difficult thing. That's what he's trying to um, tell um, Arjuna. Easiest way is Nirguna Ishwara Brahman, by turning inward. Um, now, so one of the sources of confusion is um, Arjuna asked this question, how does the Adi Yajna remain in the body? So Bhagavan has just used the term Adi Yajna. But now look at this, he is asking this question, how does this Adi Yajna remain in the body? So because Bhagavan has not talked about Adi Yajna being anywhere. So how did Arjuna ask this question? Perhaps he heard somewhere and therefore he raises the question, how does the Adi Yajna reside in the body. Okay, so uh, now with the third shloka, we start with the um, Bhagavan's teaching proper. Sri Bhagavan Uvacha Aksharam Brahma Paramam Vabhavotyatma Mujyate Bhuta Bhavod Bhavakaraha Visarka Karma Sanitaha Bhagavan said Aksharam Brahma Paramam, this imperishable and Paramam means supreme, Aksharam means imperishable, Aksharam Brahma Paramam, this imperishable and supreme entity is called Brahman. He defines Brahman. Swabhavaha Adhyatmam Uchate. Its manifestation in the body is called Adhyatma. What we call the Atma is calling it Adhyatma. In Adhyatma means in the own self. So he's defined that both Brahman and Atma are the same. So Bhagavan has very clearly said just Brahman's manifestation in the body is called Atma. In the context of like we saw space is one everywhere, right? In the context of within the home, it's called inner space. Outside the home, it's outer space. It's not air. Space is space. That deliberate action which causes the production of bodies for beings is called karma. Look how he defines karma. The deliberate action, not the accidental action, not mistakes. Deliberate action. Bhuta Bhavod Utbhava Karaha. Bhuta Bhavaha Utbhava Karaha means um, Bhuta Bhavaha, creation or production of bodies, beings. Utbhava Karaha, Utbha Utpati means production. Utbhava Karaha, Visarga. Visarga literally means sending forth, spreading out, giving. Here simply means deliberate activity. So Visargaha 
karma sanyata i understand that to be the karma okay so since bhagavan's teaching starts with akshara brahma it's called akshara brahma yoga that's all it's a misnomer it should be called prayana kala ishvara smarana in the mundaka upanishad brahman is known by the term aksharam from jesus so consciousness is the only entity which remains imperishable anything else is subject to decay and destruction even krishna god as a incarnation dies so everything else is sub- subject to decay and destruction only the consciousness is imperishable when the consciousness is seen within the body it's called adhyatma so adhyatma means within the body adhi means above or beyond or main or what so here in the, it's used in the context of with, within the body so karma one is not here by chance but the reason one has a certain body is because of this karma so it's what he says bhuta bhava udbara bhava karaha visarga like a deliberate activity is called karma okay so very clearly bhagwan defines everything karma is that which causes the production of body so as i said consciousness looking from the angle of samashti totality is the brahman the very same consciousness from the point of the individual body is called adhyatma macro micro points of view adi bhutam sharo bhava ha भगवान यूस द टर्म फॉर अर्जुना Oh, most exalted of the embodied ones, those beings with the body, right? So he says, "You are the most exalted." He is telling that to Arjuna. That which has a perishable nature, as opposed to Brahman and Adhyatma, is called Adi Bhutam. Okay. Then he uses a, a very um, a term called Adi Yagnya. Um, so and Adi Daivam. So Adi Daivam means. the total consciousness is called adidai so what is the total consciousness so we saw brahman that brahman is just consciousness before creation after creation it's just consciousness okay same brahman remained before creation then after creation the bodies are produced the consciousness in the in the context of the body whether human body lion body insect body plant body it is called atma adhyatma and then he uses a term adi dhaivam the consciousness in the context of the entire creation the universe is called adi dhaivam he is defining that that's the that consciousness is adi dhaivam associated with that dhaivam is called adi dhaivam is this consciousness and adi yajna adi yajna is none other than ishvara adi yajna ahamevatra i myself and adi yajna dehe deha brutambara so um, it is none other than ishvara so um, ishvara is defined as matter in the potential form that is the matter plus the consciousness okay um, so and why is ishvara called adi yajna because yajna means worship right or offering it to the, all these fire all this fire sacrifice what people do why is god called adi yajna because god is a receiver of all pujas in the seventh chapter yo yo yam yam tanum bhaktah shraddhaya chitum ichasi tatsya tasya chalam shraddham tane pavida damyaham so adi yajna refers to ishvara all the oblations eventually go to ishvara whichever form they worship so summary bhagwan 
defines the uh, different terms here, Brahman and Adhyatman. So six terms, Brahman and Adhyatman, primary thing in this body, macro and micro viewpoints for consciousness. He defines karma as previous activity that results in our current body and mind. And Adhibhutam, any object you experience that is perishable is called Adhibhutam, Prakriti essentially. Our bodies are perishable, so it's called Adi Bhutam. Adi Dhaivam refers to the total consciousness associated with the universe. Adi Yajna is Ishvara. So he's defined everything. So with that, all that's over. Now it's totally about remembering God at the time of death. Significance and method of remembering God at the time of death. Prayana Kala Ishvara Smarana. 5 through 14, 10 shlokas. You will see that. Any questions so far? This is a little tricky chapter, so just wanted to make sure everybody understands. Any questions from anybody? Yes, no? Understood? Any reason for going to uh, Adi Bhutam from uh, the whole? Uh... You know, he's talking about uh, the Brahman, and uh, suddenly he goes to the perishable uh, nature of uh, that. Yeah, right. So he's telling everything. Adibhutam refers to the perishable nature. Adibhutam. So, Charo Bhavaha Adibhutam. That which has a perishable nature is called Adibhutam. From his, uh, because he defined all these terms. Yeah. And now, answering them. So why is he doing this? So Swamiji here says he's just getting Arjuna's curiosity about, so this is consciousness, don't forget the consciousness. And then I'm also going to tell you about worship of Saguna Ishwara, but it is a, it, it is a roundabout form. So I want you to focus on Atma, the Brahman, that's the easier way to get liberation. That's the message. Okay. And also the meaning of karma i think he confined it to uh you know in the previous chapters he says you know he talks about karma but he says he says like you know the ways of karma are uh, karma mysterious are the ways of karma yeah but here he is defining it um, in a way so no 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 he's he's defining it exactly as it is uh, defined everywhere that deliberate action which we do, which causes production of bodies. But how the production, that is Gahana Karmana, that is very mysterious and deep. You can't, you can't say, okay, I did this, uh, this um, good thing, but I'm suffering in this life. You understand? So yeah. that uh, I did all in this lifetime, I've done nothing but good, but I'm suffering. But it's because of your previous uh, lifetime. So. When it will manifest, you never know. That's mysterious the ways of working. But on, in the overall, so many lifetimes, it will even out. Understood? No, he is confining it right here. He He's saying, you know, the actions which are done only for the production of beings. That, you know, that is one specific action is it not no he, he just says the deliberate action what is karma the deliberate action which causes whose fruits cause the production of beings is called karma he just defines it that way. does that mean that hey you know if your action is not towards production of beings then you're out of karma he does not say that he <laughs> okay. he, he, he just he just says if you do an action, yeah. it, this this action is going to determine your future births. Oh, it is talking about the that person's future, is it? The future. Yeah, that's birth. what he says. Bhuta Bhavo causes the production of bodies, your future bodies. Oh, it is talking about. That person's body. So, okay. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So now we will go on to Krama Mukti. This is the topic of this chapter. 
obtained krama means stages, vinyasa krama, so different steps. It's obtained by practicing saguna, ishvara with form like Krishna, Vishnu, Rama, ishvara, upasana throughout life. Why throughout life? So that it becomes one samskara, samskara versus mental effort. At the time of death, are you going to put mental effort? No. Samskara is easier at the time of death versus mental effort. So Bhagavan says, practice Saguna Ishvara Upasana throughout life for Krama Mukti. Understood? Anta Kale Chamam Eva Smaran Muktva Kale Param Yaprayatis Samadhavam Muktva Kalevaram, giving up the body, it means at the time of death. Muktva, Mukti, Kalevaram, it's the body. Whoever leaves giving up the body, remembering me alone, that person attains my nature. In this, there is no doubt. Na asti atra samshayaha. Na samshayaha. There's no doubt. Asti atra in this here. There's no doubt. Yaprayati sa matbhavam yati. That um, person who remembers, yapra, um, who, who leaves um, smaran mutvakale, mam smaran, who remembers me by leaving the body. Sa mat bhavam yati. That person attains my being. So at the time of death, whoever leaves giving up the body while remembering me, that person attains my nature. Okay. Mat bhavam here refers to the Krama Mukti process. Person goes to Brahma Loka, gains knowledge and liberation. Um, remembering me means Saguna Ishwara Swarupa. So, the procedure for Kama Mukti, repeating again, Saguna Ishwara Upasana for a long time in life. Remember Saguna Ishwara at the time of death, Krishna, Rama, whatever. Attain Kama Mukti, go to Brahma Loka, attain knowledge, gain liberation. Lengthy process as compared to Sadyo Mukti, instant liberation. Yam Yam Vapismaran Bhavam. Yajatyante kaleparam tamtame vaiti kaunteya sadha tat pava mahapitaha. Whatever a person thinks at the time of death, that alone they attain, O son of Kunti, being ever absorbed in the thought. Some people, they're poor throughout their lives. And they keep thinking, I wish I were rich, I wish I were rich. So at the time of death also, they wish that they were born in a rich, or have a rich life, next life or future lives. And eventually that will happen. But what does it do? It is prolonging liberation. You are again caught in the samsara. You may be rich, but you will still be miserable. There are people like that. You may have this, but still you can be miserable. So Bhagavan here says, whatever a person thinks of at the time of death, that alone they attain. So thinking at the time of death is an important thing. O son of Kunti being ever absorbed in that thought. In the Brihadaranyaka Upanishad, it says, Yo yat shraddaha saeva saha saha. Yatha kamo bhavati tad krutur bhavati yat krutur bhavati tad karma kuruti yat karma kuruti tad abhisampadyate. Watch your thoughts, they become your actions. Watch your actions, they become your habit. Watch your habit, they become your character. Watch your character, it becomes your destiny. So that's why it's important, Bhagavan says, to remember, have clean thoughts throughout your life. So at the time of death, it's those same thoughts, ideally worshiping God, remembering God.
तस्मु कालेशु मनुस्मरुद्य मैर्पित मनोबुद्धि मे पैश्य संशय Therefore, remember me at all times and fight. Here, remember me means Krishna. 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 so now the question will arise how can i do two jobs simultaneously how can i remember you and at the same time fight so um this is a question which will come so shankaracharya preemptively anticipates this question and he gives the answer so the subconscious can have ish ishvara chinta and the conscious can perform the worldly duties when when you have time away from the worldly duties at that time your conscious mind will should also think of ishvara so when you're doing meditation you think of ishvara so that the ishvara is like a, in a background like a screen saver um, background you have like that that's you feel that all the time apparently so when you're fighting you still feel the power of ishvara backing you that is what is meant um, bhagwan is trying to say clear everybody abhyasa yoga yuktena chetasa nanya ghamina paramam purusham divyam yati parta anu chintayan Okay, with the mind made steadfast by the practice of yoga, abhyasa yoga yukte na. Abhyasa means practice. Yoga yukte na. Yukta means yoked. The word yoke comes from that. Yukta yoga, all the same root. Abhyasa yoga yukte na. With the mind made steadfast by the practice of yoga, chetasa chetasa mind na anya ghamina. Not um, it's made steadfast. Yoga here means meditation. Paramam purusham devyan, um, and not wandering anywhere. One who constantly thinks of the supreme, effulgent purusha reaches that purusha at the time of death. Yati partha anuchintayan. Um, the, when the mind just follows this um, Ishvara, then at the time of death, this person. Reaches the supreme effulgent purusha. The first meaning of uh, so purusha, uh, Swamiji defines different meanings. Pura Isha, the Lord of this place that we call the body. So who's the Lord? The, the chariot example we saw in the Katopanishad. The Lord of the chariot is the consciousness, the purusha or the atma. So purusha is pure shyati iti purusha um, or pure vasati. Uh, purusha se isha purusha, then purusha se ati iti purusha. One who resides in the heart of everybody. Um, pura here refers to the body. Se ati means dwells, resides. That the indweller is called the purusha. And pura ati sarvam iti purusha hai. Pura ati means one who spreads, one who fills up this entire um, body is called the purusha. So there are three definitions Swamiji gives. Actually, he gives more definitions, but um, Shankaracharya gives even more. So far, any questions? Everybody, yes, no, understood. So he is building up this idea of remembering God at the time of death. He is talking about the Sadhya Mukti, not um, sorry. He is talking about the Krama Mukti, not Sadhya Mukti. Sadhya Mukti is instantaneous liberation through. Remembering God as the Nirguna Brahman. Can we proceed? Everybody is clear on this. Yes, no. Lata ji, Ravi, Tatiana. 
Any questions? Hello? Yeah. No. You're no, you good. no, no questions. Okay, good. So I told you, right, so far in the uh, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth, and seventh chapters, there were no trishtup meters. So we have two meters, anushtup, which has 44 syllables. Uh, sorry, 32 syllables, 8888, eight, 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 right? Um, now we we are enter, having in the eighth chapter we have a lot of trishtup meters. Trishtup meters it tells about some kind of sensationalism. So Bhagwan here is going to give sensational description of that supreme being, um, the nature of God. He's going to Ishwara Guna. Each word is an attribute of the Lord Saguna Ishwara. So one of the uh, let's look at the first. Of the Trishtup meter shlokas. Trishtup has 44. 11, 11, 11, 11. So, for example, in the previous shloka, ab, ya, sa, yo, ge, na, ab, sorry, ab, ab, ya, sa, yo, ga, yuk, te, na, eight, ke, ta, sa, na, ya, ga, mi, na, eight. So, each each is eight 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 eight, so it becomes thirty two syllables. Syllable is a uh, ya sa yo ga. All those so each is a syllable. Okay. Now we are going into kabim purana manushasitaram anoraniyam sam anusmaredya. Sarvasya data ramachintya rupam Aditya vartnam tamasaparasta Prayana kale manasachalena Bhakya yukto yoga balena chaiva Bhruvorthmatye pranam aveshya samyak Satamparam purusham upaiti divyam Beautiful shloka. So whenever there's sensationalism, Bhagavan uses trishtup meters or Vyasachari uses trishtups. These talk about the attributes of the Lord who should be remembered by the Nishkama Bhakta at the time of death. Each is an attribute of the Saguna Ishvara. Okay. So Saguna means with attributes. So what are the attributes? Okay. Now let's look at it. One who thinks of the Lord at the time of death, that Lord who is omniscient, ancient, the ruler of all, one who is subtler than the atom, sustainer of all, of an inconceivable form, effulgent like the sun and beyond ignorance. So look at, um, we look at every word. Kavi he. So in some languages, especially in Tamil, the word kavi, they interpret it as poet. But the word kavi he means omniscient. In the 10th um, 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 chapter, he kavi nam ushana kavi he, shukracharya the one who is the preceptor of the demons, he could know the past and the future, omniscient, he could know everything. When I've told the story, when um, Vishnu Bali performs a great yajna and he gives donations after the yajna, and Bali is, um, what he's done is because of his ego, he thinks he captures Indra Loka and he thinks he owns everything. So Bhagavan wants to teach him a lesson. So he comes as this little child, Vamana, and the child asks for three steps of land. And Bali laughs and says, I'll give you more. I'll give you wealth. No, no, no. I want only three steps of land. At the time, Shukracharya, he wants Bali. Shukracharya is omniscient. Kavihi. He's Kavinam Ushana Kavihi. He's, he's the most omniscient of all the omniscient people. Um, and Shukracharya wants him. This is Bhagavan Vishnu in the guise of a child. Be careful about what you promise. But Bali doesn't listen. He says, I'll give you three steps. Ask. Then Vamana expands, right? Once one step he covers the entire earth. Second step he covers the heavens. And where can I place the third step? Yes. Then Bali says, place it on my head. 
So Bhagavan places it on his head, pushes him into the Patala Loka, going into the nether worlds. So Kavi, he omniscient, Puranaha, ancient, Puranam, ancient. Anusha Sitaraha, Anusha Sitara means the ruler. It's um, Atayoga Anusha Sanam. Anusha Sanam means rule. Anusha Sitara means the ruler of all. Anuraniyam Sam. Anuraniyam Sam means minuter than the Anu. Anu's atom, minuter than the minutest. Atom, the word atom comes from Atma that which cannot be divided further. In those days, they thought atom is something that you cannot divide further. So atma, that which cannot be divided further. Also, the same English roots, a lot of them they have the Sanskrit, same thing in Russian. My Russian friends tell me that a lot of the words, they have um, Sanskrit roots. OK, anoraniyamsam, anusmaret, yeah. Um, uh, and then um, Sarvasya Data, sustainer of all. Achintya Rupam, Data means sustain, Sarvasya, all, sustaining all. Achintya Rupam, of the form of inconceivable form. Aditya Varnam, Aditya Sun, effulgent like the sun. Tamasat Parastat, and beyond ignorance, those who are able to, Anusmaredya, those who are able to think like that and then it continues further in prayana kale manasa chalena at the time of death with a mind that is focused and having and having what bhaktya yukto yoga balena chaiva bringing the prana thoroughly to the middle of the eyebrows using the power of yoga all this happens when at the time of death Rayana Kale, Manasa Chalena, by the will of the mind, Bhaktiya Yukta, with Bhakti yoked in devotion, Yoga Balena, with the power of yoga through the power of pranayama, Ruvor Madhye Pranam Aveshya Samyaka, all the prana bringing it to the middle of the eyebrows, Ruvor Madhye, middle of the eyebrows, with a steadfast devotion, then you attain that divine Purusha. Is this so? How difficult is it? That's what Bhagavan is trying to tell, and he's trying to say, I have an easier path for you. That easier path is Nirguna Nishkama Ishvara Bhakti through meditating on the Brahman. Okay, so there are 101 nadis of the heart, it's said in Kathopanishad. There, the Jivatma is supposed to reside. One of these goes to the crown of the head. I mean, a person exits the prana through it, they attain immortality. When the prana exits through the other nadis, one is reborn. So all these require gymnastics at the time of death. Krishna's message, one needs to be a great yogi with an excellent pranayama practice to be able to attain krama mukti using this procedure. Corollary. Therefore, up the path of Nirguna Ishvara Jnanam, it is easier. Even though it looks difficult, Nirguna without attributes, what can I think? No, it is you, the Atma, who is Nirguna. So go inside. That's how you attain Mukti. Okay, with that, we will stop the recording. <laughs>